Hello, and welcome back to another episode of What the Hack. In this video, we will be covering list in Python. List is yet another type of data in Python, just like the integer, float, string, and boolean types that we've seen in our previous videos. However, the list data type is a little bit more powerful or flexible in terms of storing information. Similar to how we create a string variable with quotation marks, we create a list using the square brackets. The reason why a list can be a little bit more powerful is because it can contain more than one thing, as long as we separate them with a comma. For example, if we want a list of our friends' names, we can start with a square bracket so that Python knows that it will be a list and put down the first name that we have in mind, a comma, then the second name that we have in mind, a comma, etc. This way, a list can contain more than just one name. And why is it more flexible? Because it can contain more than one type of value within itself. For example, if we have some pieces of information about our pet, such as the name Snoopy, the age 5, and whether it's had its daily walk today or not, we can have a list like this, bracket, Snoopy, comma, 5, comma, true, and a bracket to close the list. The first element in this list is the name of Snoopy, and it's a string because we've enclosed it with quotation marks. The second element is an integer because it's 5 without any decimal places. And the third element is a Boolean value true, because Snoopy has had his daily walk today. What's even more cool about lists is a list can contain another list within itself. Let's say we have a list of our puppy's favorite food. We can add that into our puppy information list. So it would look like this. Now our list contains a fourth element of Snoopy's favorite food. Now that we know what a list is and how to create it, let's take a look at some functions in Python for us to work with lists. First, we can easily find out how long a list is with the len function. This function will tell us how many elements are in the list. Let's take a look at how this works. Back to the puppy example that we were talking about a second ago. We have Snoopy, 5, and True as elements of our puppy information list. We will create this list by enclosing them with square brackets and assign this list to our variable puppy info. Next, let's look at how many elements are in our puppy list using the len function and the print function. If we run the code and look at the terminal, we see three. And we indeed have three elements in our list, the name, the age, and whether the puppy has had its daily walk or not. Now let's take a look at some of the methods we can use with lists in Python, append, pop, and remove. The append method allows us to append or add some value to the end of our list. Remember Snoopy's favorite food? We don't have it in our puppy info list right now, so let's append it to the list. We first create a list of Snoopy's favorite food and assign it to a variable. Then we can call the append method by calling our list puppy info first, then dot append bracket, and then put the variable that we want to append in our list. In our case, it's the favorite food list. This append method, along with other methods that we will introduce to you in a minute, will modify our list automatically. We don't have to save the result of this method into a variable. It is automatically saved back into our puppy info list. Now let's print out our puppy info list and see if our list has been updated. And yes, it has. Now we can see the list of our puppy's favorite food inside the puppy info list. We can also have a look at how many elements are inside our puppy info list. Now that we have a fourth element that has been appended, then we will see four elements in our puppy info list. The pop method allows us to pop an element out of our list, which just means that we remove the element in the list. We can call our list and add pop, and what this will do is that it will remove the last item in our puppy info list. Similar to the append method, we don't need to save the pop list into a variable, because the pop method will automatically modify our list to not include the item that's removed. If we do save the puppy info pop function to a variable puppy info pop, we can see that this variable now contains the item that's popped out of our puppy info list just now.
Similar to the pop method, we have the remove method. We can use the remove method when we have something specific in the list we want to remove. For example, if we decide we no longer want to keep the information about how old Snoopy is, we can remove the value 5 from the list using the remove method. Let's take a look at how that works. Because we specified that we want to remove item 5 from the puppy info list, now we can see our puppy info list only contains the name of our puppy and whether the puppy has had its daily walk or not, but not its age. When you finish adding information to your list, or when you are given a list of information, it's sometimes useful to check if it's something is already inside the list or not. We can check if something is already inside our list or not using the in key. The in keyword used with the list is a conditional statement. And this condition basically asks the question, is the thing that we want to check inside the list? Just like how you would answer a question with the yes or no. Let me show you how that works. Let's first check if our puppy's name Snoopy is already inside our puppy info list or not. We can do that by writing the name of our puppy Snoopy in quotation marks, followed by the in keyword and put our puppy info list after the keyword. If we print it out, we will see that it is true, meaning that the name of our puppy Snoopy is already in our puppy info list. Now let's do the same with Snoopy's favorite food. As you can see, the output returns false, meaning that our puppy info list does not have the information about Snoopy's favorite food inside of it right now. If you remember what a string is, it is a collection of words enclosed in quotation marks. Interestingly, string can also be a list. If you have a string that says hello, you can convert the string into a list by using the list function. Let's look at how a list converted from a string will look like and how its list is different from the original string. As you can see, our string is the word hello, but our list is a list of letters that are in the word hello. If your string can be separated into two different parts by a specific character, such as a space in between words or a comma in between clauses of a sentence, then this string can be turned into a list by the split method. Let's take a look at how that looks like. If we have this sentence, the quick brown fox jumps over a lazy dog, and we save it into a string, then the string will just simply contain the sentence. Notice that there is a space between the words. The space is what separates the sentence into different words, and we can use exactly that to split the string and turn it into a list. Here we will use the split method that we mentioned a moment ago. Inside the bracket, we will put a space enclosed by quotation marks so that the method can know that we want to split our string by the spaces between them. Now you can see this list is no longer a sentence, but a collection of words in the sentence. Awesome! Now that you guys know the basic concepts of list, here's some challenges for you guys to do at home alone. Thank you guys for watching another episode of What the Hack. Be sure to follow us on social media and don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.